Cognet and 10 minute test drive, we have a quick dive into the 2018 Kia Sorento. It's a three row crossover, yay? No, not so much. Uh, but that's more about crossovers than this car. Uh, it's a very competitive segment that this is competing in. So does the Sorento uh, hold its own or are there better options out there for you? That's what we're gonna find out on this episode of rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So we've had uh, about a week with this car and we've put close to a thousand miles on it. We had a 600 mile round trip uh, trip out to Illinois for an event and came back with it. So we've got plenty of miles in town, plenty of miles on the highway, and we've come to some pretty solid conclusions with it for the most part. Um, three row crossovers, honestly, they're not our bag, but they sell in droves. How does the Kia Sorento stack up? Well, generally, fairly well. Um, it's certainly better than a lot of them out there. I would put it in the, you know, top tier category, but number one, probably not, and we'll get to that. We'll get to why in, in, a, in a minute or two here, so. Hold that thought. So on the highway, this thing is okay. I mean, it rides nice, it drives fine. Gets 20, well, we got about 25 on the highway. It's EPA rated at uh, 24, so right there. Not too bad, and we certainly weren't taking it easy on the highway with this. Mostly our issues on the highway were the seat. After about 150 miles, the seat bottom, not the best. And this one, uh, now granted it's a press car, so it's like dog ears every, you know, every mile equals seven. Um, so this has got uh, 12,685 miles as we record this. So, you know, call it 75, 80,000 miles in real world use. Well, 50,000, honestly, to be honest with you. Generally, this is held up well, but the seats just, they're not, the seat bottoms, you're like moving around, trying to find a comfortable spot. To their credit, they're heated and they're cooled. So well done there. Um, second row seating is very good to a point. Um, I mean, as you sit back there, it's really good. The third row, it has a third row. It's usable for, for small children. So the second row seating, sorry, this is what uh, got ahead of ourselves on this. When you fold the second row down, it, you cannot uh, forward tilt the headrest. And what that means is that you have to pull the front seats almost half to three quarters of the way forward so that you can fold the, the middle row seats. The front row seats go down just fine. They, their headrests actually do tuck down so it makes it easy to, to fold. And once you do put both those rows down, it's essentially a flat floor. So well done. And that is always one of our nitpick things because we have uh, have, have, uh, well, currently, unfortunately not, don't have a dog, but we get, we're getting another one soon. Uh, and so when you have a big dog, like we like, like, uh, we like big dogs. Um, it's great to have a flat floor black back there so they can move around, lay down and, and be where they want to be. Um, so flat floor, yes, but putting that second row down is a serious pain in the ass because you have to make sure that you have to pull, for, pull uh, the seats forward, make sure you pull them for, pull them forward far enough so that when you do put the second row down, they actually do go down and don't get hung up. Amenities here in the interior, as we said, heated and cooled seats, so well done with that. Heated steering wheel, so like that. Uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, it has all of that navigation. Uh, it works fine. The Harman Kardon stereo system in here is is fine. I mean, you're not going to have any real complaints. It's, it's, it's all right. Um, and when I say it's all right, it means it's good enough. 99% of you, it's like, wow, this is amazing. And for me, eh, anyways, um, materials in here are okay. Um, there's a lot of high wear plastic, um, rubberized or rubberized and hardware plastic. Hey, it's fine. It just mm, doesn't look uh, as nice as it could. And that's what gets to our main gripe with this vehicle. And we'll get to that here in a second. So let's get to the elephant in the room here with this particular Kia Sorento. So, I'm sorry, this is a 2019 SXL all wheel drive and, you know, essentially loaded up. A, a sticker is 46,450. This has um, cargo net for 50 bucks, cargo cover for 150, interior lighting for 450, and puddle lights for 240. Uh, by the time you add uh, tax and delivery, it's 48,300. $48,370. Now, 
the price you pay at the Kia dealership will be probably vastly different than that. It'll probably be closer to 40, 40 to 42, uh, just because Kia de deals on everything. But I can't, I don't know what you're going to pay for it. So I have to base all reviews off of MSRP. And based off the MSRP, holy crap, are they asking way too much for this car? And we'll link to um, two previous reviews up here. Uh, yeah, wherever that is, left, right, whatever. Uh, for the Toyota uh, Highlander, we've tested both their uh, XLE and the Limited. And I will tell you, Toyota Highlander Limited has everything this has. Um, it doesn't have, it, they don't quite have Apple CarPlay yet, though that might be coming for the 19 model year as they're integrating that into everything. Um, but overall, the Highlander is better. Um, it gets slightly worse fuel economy and it's a little bigger, which isn't, you know, is, is in our eyes a little detriment. But everything else about it is better. The interior materials are better. The, it drives a little bit better. It's a little more capable. It has more interior room in all three rows, plus the back, which, sorry, we missed that in, uh, earlier when the third row is up. You have about this much room, literally 12 inches, maybe, uh, of room between where the door closes and the back of the third row. So it's a grocery bag, and that's about its width. So that's why I say the Toyota Highlander certainly does a better job. And you can get you could get a limited, let alone a XLE for less MSRP than what Kia is asking. And that's mainly, that's our main issue with this vehicle. It's the price. It's fine other than that. And if you can wheel and deal and get this thing for close to 40 as tested, okay, fine. You should probably buy it because it's going to be fine. But if your Kia dealer doesn't deal, then go over to Toyota and, um, uh, probably get the Highlander. They sell 225,000 of them for a reason. They're actually pretty good, and that's coming from someone who they really don't care about three-row crossovers. But in this category, that would be our choice. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.